Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany, and welcome to the Tiffany Club, where we are rediscovering some of the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are continuing our Noir November celebration with the film Shadow of a Doubt. Before we jump in, I would like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continuous support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description box below. Shadow of a Doubt was released in 1943, directed by our favorite Alfred Hitchcock, starring Joseph Cotton and Teresa Wright, with other notable performances by McDonald Carey, Patricia Collins, Henry Travers, and Wallace Ford. So at this point, we are going to get into some historical background for those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. Shadow of a Doubt began as a pitch to Alfred Hitchcock by Gordon McDonald. This pitch fascinated Hitchcock, so he asked McDonald to write a nine-page outline of his idea. Hitchcock later asked Thornton Wilder to flesh out a screenplay for him. Wilder, who was widely praised for his very popular stage play, Our Town, was initially uninterested to take on the project. However, once Hitchcock expressed his admiration and respect for Wilder's work, he was quite eager to work with Hitchcock. He felt that Hitchcock was very passionate about writing and um, really wanted to kind of collaborate with him. So he took on the project. Shadow of a Doubt was later nominated for one Oscar at the 16th Academy Awards. Okay, on to some interesting facts. So Gordon McDonnell, the man who originally pitched the idea of Shadow of a Doubt to Alfred Hitchcock, was actually the husband of Margaret McDonnell, who was the head of the story department for David O. Selznick. Now I say this because Gordon McDonnell was totally a normal guy, his wife was in the industry, yet he had a chance to pitch his idea to Hitchcock, have his idea be turned into a movie, and then the Oscar that Shadow of a Doubt was nominated for was actually for Best Original Story, which was awarded, or would have been had he have won, would have been awarded to Gordon McDonnell. So I think it's kind of cool that he went from like, you know, average Joe, wife's kind of working in the industry, to possibly almost winning an Oscar. That is... Like, I mean, talk about right place, right time, right? Like, that is fantastic. Now, with all that being said, I am so excited to get into this movie. But before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let us get in to Shadow of a Doubt. Give us a title. Alfred Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt. Okay, I see them dancing in the background. That's cute. Dimitri Tiomkin. Let's go. He's the uh, the composer on this. Mr. Spencer, I hate to bother you, but I thought you'd like to know there were two men here. A young man and a kind of older man. They were sorry you wasn't in. Oh my God, I love Joseph. I Cotton. said you wasn't. I feel like I just fangirl over all of these actors. I don't know why. I just do. Why, Mr. Spencer, you ought to leave all that money lying around like that. They aren't exactly friends of mine. They've never seen me. Now that I'm here, I'll have to meet them. God, I know how much Hitchcock loves his dolly shots. Even in his earlier work, you just know. He just loves to use dolly shots. Oh my god, what is he gonna do? <laughs> I feel like something is about to go down. They're trying to pretend like they're not, like, stalking him or watching him or staking him out. Oh, I love how he has him walking in unison. Very eerie. And here's Dimitri Tiomkin in here with this freaking music. I love it. I want to send a telegram to Mrs. Joseph Newton in Santa Rosa, California. I'm coming out to stay with you a while. Stop. Love to you all from Uncle Charlie. Is there a reason why all of these film noirs take place in California? Maybe that, like, says something about California. <laughs> also, I didn't know that you could call in a telegram. I think that's so cool. Newton's residence. A telegram? I don't see a pencil, so maybe she better call you back. I wonder if they had her reading her lines in that book, because that's kind of what it looked like. Hello, Anne. Where's your mother? She's out. Here I am, practically a child, and I wouldn't read the things you read. Well, don't read too much. It'll ruin your eyes. Oh my god, she's precious. It's like the equivalent of being, like, on your phone. She knows is stuck in a book. That's so cute. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? 
just been thinking for hours and that this family's just gone to pieces. Just sort of go along and nothing happens. You're in a terrible rut. I swear, Hitchcock has the most unique shots of any uh, director or filmmaker I've seen. Poor mother, she works like a dog. Now I think we ought to do something for her. What were you thinking of doing for her? Guess we'll just have to wait for a miracle or something. Definitely seems like a typical family here. I kind of like the, the fact that this is centered around a family. Mother, I'm going downtown and send a telegram. Well, darling, who do you know to send a telegram to? I know a wonderful person who will come and shake us all up. Mother, what's Uncle Charlie's address? I also really do like the fact that her name is Charlie, but then also the uncle's name is Charlie. That kind of connects the characters for the audience, even though they haven't had any scenes together yet. You already know that there's some sort of attachment there, you know, just by way of the names. Looks like somebody's coming. Who's coming, Ma? Well, it's the most wonderful surprise. It's my brother, you know, my younger brother, the baby. Isn't it always the youngest? The youngest is always the one that's up to no good. Well, what a joy. What do you think? Charles is coming. Who? Your Who? Uncle Charlie. I love his camera movements and camera angles. And the way that he moves with his subjects. Oh, it's fantastic. How are you feeling, Mr. Otis? Pretty well. Harry, tell the porter you're a doctor. Ask if there's anything you can do. Maybe you can help that poor soul. Listen, I'm on my vacation. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to work on my vacation. This seems so wholesome, you know? But knowing Hitchcock, it's going to turn real dark. Real quick. I don't know what happened to him. Oh, and suddenly he doesn't need the cane anymore? What? Oh, at first I didn't know you. I thought you were sick. Sick? Yes, I think this is, it's so interesting that this is like, it's very like family oriented, which is something I haven't quite seen in, a, I guess, in a film noir yet. You look like Emma Spencer Oakley of 46 Burnham Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, the prettiest Aww. girl on the block. Charles, it's so wonderful to have you here. Emmy, Emmy, don't cry. I love how everyone's so happy and cheerful. It just feels like a good, like, what a good family reunion. Charlie thought you'd be more comfortable here. I don't put the hat on the bed. Superstitious Joe? No, but I don't believe in inviting trouble. Oh, God. That means that he's trouble, or he's, he brings the trouble with him. I have two for you, Emmy. One old and one new. Oh, how beautiful. Look, Emmy. Charles, you've had these all along. Are those her parents? How sweet. Now for your present, Charlie. It would spoil things if you should give me anything. Because we're not just an uncle and a niece, but we're sort of like twins. He got her a ring. I feel like I want to call out an elephant in the room. Like, I find their, their relationship a little strange. You've had something engraved on it that's different. I haven't, but I will if you like it. Yes, you have, Uncle Charlie. It's very faint. T.S. from B.M. Yeah, this is a very strange, uh, very strange character dynamic. Mm, I can't get that tune out of my head. The, uh, Blue Danube Walls. No, it isn't, Uncle Charlie. It's the Mary... Terribly oh. sorry. Huh, what, wait, what just happened? I feel like there's something with that song that he doesn't like. If I wanted to murder you tomorrow, I'd find out if you were alone, hit you on the head with a piece of lead pipe. Where's your clues? I don't want any clues. I want to murder you. <laughs> I don't want clues. I want to murder you. What? What an interesting conversation to have. You ever see a house made out of newspapers? You take one sheet here. Right off. There. I feel like he's hiding, like he's trying to hide evidence of something. And he ripped a page out, like he ripped a little piece out. He's already been shady, dude. What'd you do with page three and four? We never touched it, really. Uncle Charlie's the only one that touched it. Oh, well, I guess it's all right if I fold it very neatly. Maybe he won't notice. Ooh, he's getting rid of some. <laughs> I love it. Brought you water. Oh, thank you, Charlie. That's very thoughtful of you. Pleasant dreams. So one thing that I read is that he, there's one shot where he does, where he does like the silhouette of a person. The person that's shaded has ulterior motives or, or something else is going on, you know? He did that here again. So I'm assuming that, uh, that Uncle Charlie has some ulterior motives for being here in Santa Rosa. I know a secret about you you don't think I know. I think Thanks. it's also... It's none of your business. Oh, he changed quick. Charlie, I didn't mean to hurt you. 
Oh no! Oh no! Uncle Charlie! You got some, some, uh, anger issues, baby. You are not the only celebrity in this town. The whole Newton family is going to be in the limelight. A young man called this morning, and he wants to interview everybody in this house. I like the, uh, the character of Uncle Charlie. He's very charming. He's charismatic. But you can tell there's something colder underneath that handsome exterior. Like, there's something sinister brewing there. He's going to take our pictures, too. Pictures? I mean, women are fools. They'd fall for anything. Why do you let two strangers come into your house and turn the place upside down? Every now and then, he's like happy, he's charismatic, he's sweet. The brother that you love so much. And then the mask slips. And you see the real Uncle Charlie underneath, you know, the happy exterior. I really like how Joseph Cotton is kind of playing with that. Well, if today's the thing, then you better finish your breakfast and get down to the bank because Joe will be waiting. And Charlie, don't be late back because the questionnaire men are coming in court o'clock. I really like that, that it's kind of like family dynamics. And usually when you think of a family, it's like wholesome connection and togetherness and love. Yet it's also being played against this, this darker theme of like uh, suspicion and crime. And very interesting, very um, interesting opposing themes there. Oh my God, he's so handsome. I'm sorry. See the way they looked at you? But they wonder who you are. Oh, but Charlie, I love to walk with you. I want everybody to see you. Yeah, again, weird... Weird character dynamic. And I don't know if that's, like, it was weird in 1940, but it's they're a little too close, okay? I'm sorry. Yes, Pop, in that window over there. Hello, Joe. Can you stop embezzling a minute and give me your attention? Oh, uh... well. <laughs> Can't joke like that, Charles. Every single person looked at him like, embezzling? <laughs> well, Joe, let's see your president. Still want to open that account, Charles. That's why I'm here. Charles. He doesn't care much for jokes about banks. Uh, $40,000 is no joke. Not to him, I bet. I also feel like the fact that he decided to go to the house to kind of hide or evade, you know, whoever was staking him out talks more into his character because he's basically exploiting them a little bit. I don't know. It, but it does speak more to his character. Well, I suppose you might call me a promoter. I've done a little bit of everything. But maybe I'd put some of my loose cash away for safekeeping. Loose cash? Well, I got in the habit of carrying a lot of cash with me when I was traveling. 40, 40,000. He's just carrying $40,000 in cash around. Can someone calculate that in the uh, comments? Mrs. Green, I'd like you to meet my uncle, Mr. Oakley. Uncle Charlie, this is Mrs. Green and Mrs. Potter. Mrs. Potter? <laughs> Mrs. Potter. <laughs> Ew, is he flirting with her? Weird. So I There's one I'd... good thing in being a widow, isn't there? You don't have to ask your husband for money. Uh, <laughs> oh, she's a widow. Oh, jeez. Bye, Mr. Oakley. You know, you know when you feel like everything looks happy and dandy, but there's just just something that's off. That's what I feel right now. Those must be the questionnaire men. They're a whole hour early. Couldn't you do. must be the men who want to interview us. My name is Graham, Miss Newton. Mother, government men are here. It's always such a treasure to watch his films because there's just so much going on. You know, it's, in in terms of camera movement. Uh, the six in your family. Five. Just put down five because my uncle doesn't want to be bothered with a lot of questions. Well, you see on a survey. And I promised him he wouldn't be bothered. That actor has a face that looks timeless. I could see him in the 1980s or the 90s. Like, he has a timeless face. I wonder if we could take a look at the upstairs. Could you show us and your mother can call us when she's ready? All right. Falling in the eggs has to be done just right. I can't beat them and let them stand. <laughs> he looks... I love how he just is like, I, you know... It's really not that worth it. Is this your uncle you were telling us about? Now for one of the hall. Mr. Sun has been taking pictures of my room. <laughs> How smooth was that? Fred, I'll have to ask you for the film. Oh, Uncle Charles. Give it to me, please. She's like, why are you acting like that? Could I borrow your daughter for this evening? I'd like to look around the town a little. So he asked her on a date. I feel like it's not for what, what we think it is, you know? You're a detective. There's a man loose in this country. We're after him. If your uncle's the man we want, we'll get him out of town quietly. We won't arrest him here. And here I thought, here I thought this man just wanted to have dinner with her. No. Just kidding. I knew it was, I knew he was trying to get information out of her. I knew it. Good night, Charlie. It's going to be funny when you find out you're wrong. Good night. It's going to be funny when she finds out she's wrong. <laughs> That's going to be freaking hilarious. <laughs> Well, you better run in now. Your Uncle Charlie's been asking about you. 
I think I'll just go up the back way. I, I'm tired and I don't feel like talking. All right, shoot yourself. Mm -mm, there is something up with Uncle Charlie, babe. And now the seed of doubt has been planted in her head. All we have to wait for is for it to take root and to blossom. Did you taste anything funny about that coffee you had at my house this evening? Put something in it? Put a little soda. About the same amount that I'd have used if I'd wanted to use poison. What is up with their morbid conversations about killing each other? Charlotte, what are you doing? Come on. Just looking for a recipe I thought I saw, but the time's the library closed. So you'd know it closes at night. <laughs> I love Anne. She's like totally engrossed in her books. I love it so much. Be careful! What do you think I'm out here for? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No. All right, go ahead. Wow, she's really deep in thought. Literally almost got ran over by a car. Oh, they just closed. That sucks. She missed it. You know as well as I do, the library closes at nine. If I make one exception, I'll have to make a thousand. <laughs> She's like, you had all day to come into this freaking library and you come in right at 901? Come on. What is it? Now I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to know what's on that newspaper. <gasps> Where's the Merry Widow murderer? Nationwide search underway for strangler of three rich women. The whereabouts of the so-called Merry Widow murderer strong-handed... Strangler of three wealthy women is a question baffling detectives today who are conducting a coast-to-coast -coast search for the killer. And that ring! <gasps> they're not gifts, they're freaking trophies from his murders. Uncle Charlie is a murderer. That's why he was looking that widow up and down. I saw him looking at her too. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Charlie's still asleep? No, she just woke up. Perhaps I shouldn't have let her sleep so long, but I think she needed it. She doesn't look quite herself. She'll be down for dinner. This is where Uncle Charlie messed up, okay? The fact that he tried to conceal the newspaper in such a obvious way. The police don't even have his face, you see? That was his mistake. That was on him. The cities are full of women. Middle-aged widows, husbands dead, faded, fat, greedy women. But they're alive. They're human beings. Are they? If I didn't suspect him already, after that, I would have a hundred percent suspected him. I mean, not even suspected. He definitely killed those widows. Joe, it's Herbert. If I brought you some mushrooms, would you eat them, Joe? No. I suppose I would. Why? The worst I'd be accused of would be manslaughter. Accidental death, pure and simple. Sir, you need to stop reading those crime novels, okay? You're getting a little creepy. Do you always have to talk about <laughs> killing know. people? Herb's talking about killing me, and I'm talking about killing him. It's your father's way of relaxing. <laughs> what a strange way to relax. I'm Charlie. She, she doesn't make sense talking like that. I'm worried about her. Roger, go get her. Ring her back. I'll go. You stay here and finish your dinner. Oh, no. Don't let, don't let Uncle Charlie go. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Look how terrifying. With the music, too? Oh, no. Better keep your eye on your niece, Mr. Oakley. I'll have to give her a ticket for speeding one of these nights. Could you imagine getting <laughs> a ticket for speed walking? <laughs> that is hilarious. You're a pretty understanding sort of girl. You've heard some little things about me. Well, I guess you're a woman of the world enough to overlook them. To overlook them? You killed women. Widows. For their money. I guess I've done some pretty foolish things. Made some pretty foolish mistakes. Oh my god, and then he puts, like, he's so obvious. Come on. Don't start imagining things. How could you do such things? We thought you were the most wonderful man in the world. Charlie, what do you know? That's a fr- It's a freaking trophy from one of your victims. You live in a dream. You're a sleepwalker blind. Do you know the world is a foul sty? Do you know if you ripped the fronts off houses, you'd find swine? Oh my god. He is like playing the sociopath so well. Or the psychopath. Will you help me? Help you? The same blood flows through our veins, Charlie. It's an end to the running a man can do. There's a man in the East. They suspect him too, and if they get him, I'll... The way that he shifts from like, you know, the charming exterior to like the monster within, it's like effortless. It goes back and forth. You realize what it'll mean if they get me? The electric chair. Yes, you're a murderer. What, what are you talking about? I count on you, no matter what I've done. 
man. And also, what an emotional, like, roller coaster that poor Charlie is in. Because now she has to face the fact that her uncle is a monster. Hello. Hello. Hello, Catherine. Good morning, Mr. Graham. Well, Catherine, this is Mr. Saunders. <laughs> Catherine. How do you do? I love how all she does is look men up and down. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to talk to you about that photograph we took. One of your uncle? Yes, we got the picture all right. We're wired at east. The minute the witness to see that picture, we'll know whether or not Opie's the man. They got him. I'm always thinking that Hitchcock is going to pull a fast one on us. The uh, fella said they caught that other fella. The one they called the Merry Widow Murderer. <laughs> and they were just about to nab him at the Air Force, and he ran plump right into the propeller of an aeroplane. Well, there you go. Oh, man, so the other guy was framed for the murders that he did. Well, I think I'll go out and get ready for dinner. I'm hungry. I can eat a good dinner today. I feel like, oh, I hope he, I hope he doesn't try and like get rid of her. Cause that's just going to be tragic. Charlie, I have great news for you. Where can we talk about I kind of like how the perspective changed a little. Throughout this whole movie, we've been really following Charlie. But for that split second, we were kind of following Uncle Charlie and his point of view, just for a split second. I, I really like that. Well, we got a wire from Maine, so we've been called off the job. I'll bet you're relieved. Believe me, I am. Oh, I am relieved. And here you were trying to get your uncle out of town. He must have thought you were crazy. Except for the fact that her uncle is the Merry Widow murderer. Yes, I like it. Oh, I'm glad. I like you, too. I wanted to wait until you've forgotten all the mess we've been through together, too. You could stop thinking of me as a part of something unpleasant and frightening. I love that he really actually does like her. There's kind of some, you know, romance and love out of this really strange situation. I'm going to put a bronze plaque right up there. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like he's going to try to do something to Charlie or to someone. I don't know. I don't trust him at all. Finished here? All finished. But I'll be back. You'll be seeing me around. Oh, not on business, though. Charlie's a fine girl. She's the thing I love most in the world. Did you see the way he just grabbed her like that? Oh, my God. Anything else? I've got butter. If I've forgotten anything, I'll send Dad later. All right. Oh, my God. Mother! Oh, my God. Uncle Charlie is trying to kill her or to seriously injure her. When are you leaving? I'm not going, you see. Not yet, I'm not going. I want to settle down. Live in a place where people know me, have some money in the bank, some sort of business. He's basically saying, I'm not leaving until you're out of the picture. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. Go away or I'll kill you myself. They literally have a killer living in their home. That's carbon monoxide. Oh my God. I don't want him to hurt this, this precious family. Charlie, you run out to the garage and get the car. Oh, I'd much rather drive the family. Charlie, I want you to hear my speech on the way. After all, you're my severest critic, you know. He's like, Charlie, get in the car. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna lock her in the garage. He's gonna lock her in the garage. I can't believe he would go as far as to kill his most beloved niece. Oregon State Police pressed their search today for five persons. Oh, does it have to be so loud? Get the lower tones better. I like it. He's making the music louder so they don't hear her screaming for help. Oh my god. Everybody, somebody's caught in the garage. Charlie. Oh, oh, thank God for her. Thank you, Jesus. Please, Lord, tell me that she's okay. And he has the key. Son of a gun. A bottle of whiskey on my bureau. Get it quick. Charlie. Charlie, dear Charlie. Charlie. Emmy, rubber feet. Roger, run get something to fan it with. Charlie. Get some fresh air in your lungs, Charlie, and then punch him in the face. I'm all right. Don't call Dr. Phillips. No, please, Dad. I I'm all right. I, I just want to get out. You got a wonderful escape, Charlie. Someone must have left the motor running. Yeah, you and took the key, and wedged the garage door. Now, Mr. Oakley, I thought champagne was only for battleships. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing with a killer. I'm sure for my wife. Potter. But we hope you'll all forget we're here. It's always the one you never suspect. It's the one who's the most charismatic, the one who everyone likes. Think about Rebecca. 
It's really, really scary stuff. Ah, here she is. Now for my toast. She's wearing the ring. <laughs> she found it, baby. I hate to break the news to you like this, but tomorrow I must leave Santa Rosa. Yeah. Oh, Emmy, darling, I didn't mean to spoil your fun tonight. I got a letter today and have to catch the early morning train. I feel like if she ever found out that her brother was a murderer, she would be destroyed. Bless you for your gift to our hospital. The children will bless you, too, in all the years to come. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, everybody. Roger, what did I tell you? Oh, my God, it's the widow. She's wearing the expensive fur. His next victim. Just a minute. The train's moving, oh. Uncle Charlie. Listen, Charlie, I want you to forget all about me. Forget that I ever came to Santa Rosa. Um, let her go, Charlie. Let her leave. Oh, my God. I've got to do this, Charlie. So long as you know what you do about me. Oh, my God, he's going to throw off the train. Oh. 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 Wow. That was an interesting reveal. Santa Rosa has gained and lost her son. A son that she can be proud of. Brave, generous. You know what? This reminds me a lot of Rebecca. It's like we kind of got to see what people, how people would have been around Rebecca when she was alive. Wow, that is so fantastic. He said that people like us had no idea what the world was really like. It seems yeah. to go crazy every now and then. Like your Uncle Charlie. That was fantastic. That end was fantastic. I do like that Hitchcock kind of allowed the suspense of did he do it, did he not do it to kind of play and play and play until the very end when he says, obviously, like, you know too much about me, now I got it off you, right? I really enjoyed that. And I, again, especially enjoyed the fact that he was seen as this charismatic guy, you know? And also, also, let's talk about Joseph Cotton in this role and how he was able to kind of have the mask of Uncle Charlie slip every now and then. And you saw it was a very distinct slip. He went from charming and smiling and pleasant to suddenly cold, murderer, monster, you know? Yeah, that was really well done. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact of the camera movements in this film, so fluid. There was a lot more fluid motion with the camera and it gave the audience a lot to kind of um, look at and it was very stimulating and yeah, very, very well done on Hitchcock's part. I'm so happy that we got to revisit his movies again. Yeah, it was a fantastic film. I think I would place it at probably like a, a 9 out of 10. I think it was really well done. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see the full reaction to this film, it is up on Patreon, available exclusively to our Golden Oscar patrons. And in the next video, we are continuing our Noir Vember celebration with the film Laura. Now, I'm so excited to watch Laura. Um, I've heard so many good things about it, but then also uh, Dana Andrews is in it, and I... I love the man, so I cannot wait to see him in this movie. If you haven't seen Laura, then I highly encourage you to check it out either in its entirety or just check a quick synopsis of it online. Then come back with all of your movie facts and your movie insights, and we are going to talk about it in the comment box below. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood film, go ahead and check out our recommendation form. It is in the description box. Guys, this is always such a pleasure and such an honor. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy out there. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye everyone. Let's do this. This is the time to get excited. Hitchcock later asked Thornton Wilder to flesh out a screenplay for him. 16th, I was about to say 23rd. I don't know why I always want to say the 23rd. No, just go with what you know, Mia. Stop trying to improvise. Now, Wilder was widely popular, 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 popular. <laughs> oh, so good when I messed up. This is not good. One more time. Gee whiz. That must have been like the Oscars to go to, all right? I feel so funny when I do this. Like I'm literally sitting in a room and nobody's in here. It's just me talking to a, a camera. I fe that felt stupid. So I hope it doesn't look stupid. Why was I gonna say with the film? What the freak am I thinking?
It's strange. It's a very, it's a very bizarre feeling. The words, they don't come to me. That felt so good, guys. I'm so happy I'm on cloud nine. Okay, bye everyone.